everyone, welcome back to part two of using Inkscape to control your laser. In the previous video, we used an extension in Inkscape called JTEC Photonic Laser Tool. With that extension, we were able to engrave pictures and text and even cut. In part two, we'll be looking at a different extension for Inkscape called Raster to G-Code. Let's get vaporizing. The author of the Raster to G-Code Inkscape extension can be found on the Hackaday website. The author has placed easy to use instructions on how to use his extension for Inkscape and also some example outputs based on the options available within his extension. As the description says, we're able to generate G-code to control our laser. We can simply turn the laser on and off in a black and white fashion, similar to the previous JTEC Photonics extension, but we also have the option for a grayscale output by controlling the laser using a PWM interface. And of course, we're using the fan output on the RAMS board, which does support PWM. To download this extension, go to the GitHub webpage, click the clone or download button, download zip file, and export the contents of the zip file into your Inkscape share extensions directory. The big difference between Raster to G-Code and the previous video's JTEC Photonic Laser Tool is the way it controls the laser. In the previous video, we saw the laser was following an efficient path to draw the perimeters of the shape and the text, resulting in very low engraving times. However, with Raster to G-Code, it actually scans along the x-axis, increments the y-axis by a small amount, and scans back across the x-axis, completing the entire picture in a much longer period of time. However, the laser will spend most of its time turned off and the laser will only turn on briefly when it arrives at a location that needs to be engraved. Open Inkscape, the first thing we'll do is zoom in our document page. Go to View, Zoom and Page. Now we'll draw a square within our document page. Here I want to draw a square with dimensions of 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. To do that, change the width to 20 and the height to 20. For the raster to G-code extension, we also need to place whatever we're engraving in the bottom left hand corner. To do that, make sure the object is highlighted. Go up to the X coordinate and choose 0, Y coordinate 0. So now our square starts from the bottom left hand side of the document. The last thing we need to do is adjust the size of the document to match the size of the object we're engraving. To do that, we'll go up to File, Document Properties, and we want to adjust the width to 20 and the height to 20. Now the document and the object we're engraving are exactly the same size. The last thing we need to do is export our G-code. Go to Extensions, 305 Engineering, Raster to Laser G-Code Generator. First it's asking for the export directory and a file name. Replace transparency with white. The resolution of the picture we're engraving. Here I'm just engraving a 20 millimeter square and it is colored in black so this extension will color the entire square in black and the maximum resolution is 10 pixels per millimeter. We'll leave it at maximum resolution. The color to grayscale conversion doesn't apply here because it is just a black object but we do have a number of options on how this program will convert the color into grayscale. The black and white conversion algorithm there are various options here to choose. I'm just going to leave mine on grayscale. Black and white threshold 128 is the center, 255 is dark, and 0 is light. Grayscale resolution, we'll leave this at the maximum resolution being 256. That matches the number of PWM output options we have from the fan control. Engraving speed, I'm going to be engraving this quite fast at 3000 millimeters per minute, which equates to 50 millimeters per second. I've chosen 
no homing because I wish to place the laser at the location that I want it to start engraving. I don't want it to home before it starts. The laser on command, we're using the fan output of the ramps board to turn the laser on and off. The laser on command is M106 and the laser off command is M107. Last thing to do, press apply. Let's go ahead and take a look at the G-code now. We'll see there are three output files that this program has exported. We have a square.png and a grayscale converted preview of that same PNG file. At the moment they're both just going to be black squares, but as we progress into a color image we'll see what the output will be. The file that we're after though is this square gray 256 gcode.txt. Let's open that up. What I wish to do here is add my z-axis command of z50. So the very first thing the 3D printer will do is move the x-axis to 0, y-axis to 0, which it will be from the start, but it will move the z-axis to 50 as that is the height that I need for my focal point from the laser to the engraving surface. Then it will turn the laser onto full power, then it will start moving the printhead. We'll also change the file name to get rid of the .txt at the end as we want a .gcode extension. I've positioned the laser where I want the square to be engraved. This is just a piece of scrap cardboard and I'm butting up the laser to the top of the cardboard as I've added Z50 to the start of the G-code file so the bed platform will drop by 50 millimeters, ensuring the sharp focal point is doing the engraving. I also highly recommend copying the G-code files to an SD card as as we progress to other picture files the G-code files get very large and the USB uh, communications link cannot keep up with the number of commands being sent so the SD card is the only way to go. Glasses on and hit print. That's finished. Let's take a look. That is very dark. I can just see a crosshatch pattern in there actually. Probably little dots from where the laser was turning on and off. For our next test, I'll be engraving this plane picture. The exact same plane picture from the previous video. But I'd like to see how this raster to G-code Inkscape extension reproduces this as opposed to the JTEC Photonics laser tool. I'm especially interested to see how the windows of the plane turn out as they are shaded darker. The laser has just finished, and note that the laser has returned back to its original position. So I can push that out of the way, and let's take a look at the final result. Now, as you can see, the image is quite, quite faint, and there's a lot of detail that is lost in this image than in the previous image that I've engraved using the other, the other tool, this one here. You can see this one is nice and sharp, and the one below 
isn't as sharp. It's a bit faded in places. Mind you, I was printing this one, laser engraving this one at 25 millimeters per second, and this one at 50 millimeters per second, so it's not a a one-to-one -one comparison, but this one here took 29 minutes to complete. So if I slowed this one down to 25 millimeters per second, then that would have taken about an hour to complete, where this one here was about one minute. However, it isn't a fair fight because this is just a vector file. This isn't what this raster to G-code um, is designed for or is its main purpose. Its main purpose is for, is for picture files. So let's give that a test. A common request I've received in the comment sections of my other laser-based videos is can this laser be used to etch PCBs? And the answer to that is yes. This is a piece of uh, copper clad PCB. I've spray painted one half of it in this matte black finish acrylic paint. The idea here is with your Eagle PCB or free PCB or whatever uh, design software you use to make your printed circuit boards, you can export those designs as a, as a picture file, as a raster file. We can then import those designs into Inkscape, use the raster to G-code extension to convert that into our G-code commands to send to our laser. That way we can burn away the paint where we want the copper to be etched, leaving the actual printed circuit board design left with paint on top. In Eagle PCB, I've opened up this example board. We want to remove a lot of the image of this PCB. We only want to etch away the top layer, the pads and the vias. To do that, we'll click the layers button, we'll choose none and we'll only select top pads and vias. The last thing we need to do is we need to change the background color from white to black because it's the background that we want to cut and the image that we want to be left so the paint is left on top of the tracks pads and vias. To do that we'll go up to options user interface and the layout will set the layout background to black. Now we can export this uh, schematic diagram as a picture file. Go to file export image Choose a nice high resolution, here I've chosen 600 dpi, we'll give it a name, call it uh, PCB, and definitely select monochrome so it's only black and white. Browse to a directory that you wish to save it to, and hit OK. And here's the result from exporting that picture file from Eagle PCB. We can see the tracks, pads and vias are white, so the laser will be off when it's on top of that location and the laser will be on when it needs to etch away the background. I've imported the PCB into Inkscape and I've adjusted the document properties to perfectly fit around the PCB. In the raster to laser G-code generator extension, I've reduced the speed down to 900 millimeters a minute. That's only 15 millimeters a second because I want to make sure that the laser is actually burning away the black uh, paint that we want to expose the PCB to the etching solution to. I've left everything else uh, as it was in the previous tests except I've changed the name to PCB. Okay, it's just finished. That took 13 minutes. Let's take a look. You can clearly see the circuit design there. Now I'm assuming if I just brush my finger over this board design, the board layout will stay, hopefully, but the black soot, I'm hoping that's black soot, which is where it was uh, etched away. Let's have a look. Wow, check that out. Let me get a cloth and something to wipe this off with. 
I'll try some isopropyl alcohol first to see if that can clear up all the soot that's left behind from the engraving or etching. I think I was a bit aggressive with the isopropyl. Started to remove some of the tracks. Oops. And of course, if you're just practicing or you've made a mistake with your PCB design or you've accidentally scratched away some of the black paint where a track is, just like what I've done, you can always start again. This is reusable. To get rid of the black paint, you can scrub really hard with a piece of paper towel, or you could use acetone or nail polish remover or anything that can remove uh, this sort of paint. So I'll just pour a little bit onto uh, that paper towel. And you can see it's immediately starting to eat away at all the paint. Ready for another application. And more testing. And that was a test of the raster to G-code extension for Inkscape. It does what it says. It converts picture files into G-code files that we could use to control our laser connected to a 3D printer. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you like what I do, check out my Patreon page. And I'll catch you next time.